Translation. Initiation. Initiation factor 3 is bound to the 30S ribosomal subunit to prevent the 70S ribosomal complex from forming. The 16S rRNA, which is part of the 30S subunit, recognizes the Scheindel-Garnel sequence on the translation initiation region of the mRNA transcript and binds to the mRNA. Initiation factor 1 is bound to the A site and blocks the A site. The mRNA transcript begins to move through the ribosome in a 5' to 3' direction. Once a start codon is reached in an open reading frame, which would be AUG or GUG, initiation factor 2, which is bound to a GTP, binds to the incoming amino acyl tRNA that has an anticodon that correlates to the codon on the mRNA transcript. This will carry a formulated methionine tRNA. And the GTP attached is hydrolyzed. Initiation factor 1 and initiation factor 3 are then released and the 50S ribosomal subunit binds to the 30S sub subunit, thus forming the 70S ribosomal complex. The 70S ribosome is now ready to accept another amino acyl tRNA into the A site to begin elongation. Notes to mention. Amino acids are attached to the tRNA by amino acyl tRNA synthetase. This is the proofreading stage of translation. There is no proofreading mechanism once the tRNA is brought into the A site. If an incorrect protein is made, it is not extremely detrimental to the cell. The cell can always make more protein from the mRNA blueprints. Amino acids are attached to the three prime arm of the tRNA. GTP hydrolysis is much slower than ATP hydrolysis. This allows for a much slower, more deliberate reaction with fewer mistakes. Ribosomes will attach to the mRNA and begin translating before the mRNA is even finished being transcribed. And finally, multiple ribosomes can be translating off the same mRNA sequence as long as there are multiple translation initiation regions. This concludes initiation. Next is elongation. In elongation, the next codon on the mRNA transcript is read, and elongation factor 2 that is bound to a GTP binds to the corresponding amino acyl tRNA. As the incoming amino acyl tRNA is brought into the A site, the EF2 GTP complex is hydrolyzed and releases a phosphate. The 23S rRNA, also known as amino acyl transferase, which is part of the 50S subunit, transfers the amino acyl group from the tRNA in the P site to the amino acid in the A site, forming a peptide bond. Elongation factor G, which is also bound to GTP, also known as translocase, moves the tRNA from the A site to the P site, which will in turn push the tRNA that was originally in the P site into the E site. Once the tRNA is pushed into the E site, the tRNA is released and recycled to be used again. Translocase also requires energy, so the EFG GTP complex is hydrolyzed to release a phosphate. This process is repeated over and over until a stop codon is reached. Termination. A stop codon is a nonsense codon that does not have our corresponding tRNA. There are three of them, UAA, UAG, and UGA. When a ribosome encounters a stop codon, translation stops. The area between the stop codon and the end of the mRNA transcript is known as the three prime untranslated region. It is important to note that just because translation has stopped, that does not mean that the ribosome has dissociated from the mRNA transcript. Release factors must enter the A site and release the ribosomal subunits from the mRNA transcript. This step requires energy. Release factors work with elongation factor G, which is our translocase, to cleave the polypeptide from the P site to release the completed amino acid sequence. This step also requires energy. Specific release factors will vary depending on each species.